Good afternoon and welcome back to the workbench. Uh, so today I was going to do a video on some electronic stuff, possibly uh, preparing an old TV, or at least trying to. Um, but that can't happen today because there's no power. Uh, it was a pretty big storm last night. Um, I suppose not huge by storm standards, but um, for here it certainly was probably the the biggest I've seen. Definitely the highest wind and a few trees of come down, if I can probably hear the uh, neighbours next door <laughs> chainsawing the um, fallen branches and there's a tree that's also come down on another property. Um, and I went for a walk this morning in the rain and saw some more trees that had been hit by lightning and um, some that had been blown out of her and, and all that. So, yeah, a um, bit of fun and the power went out uh, about eight, eight o'clock last night, and it's been off um, until now, which is uh, ten in the morning. So it's been over. Well, that's what fourteen, just about fourteen hours. It's been off all night, um, which hasn't happened for a long time. I don't think uh, we've had power cut for that long since maybe fifteen, twenty years. So. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting. Um, usually they fix it within a couple of hours, but um, I think the storm was uh, just high winds. It probably would have been too dangerous to work on anything, so um, nothing's happened. So here I am, um, freezing in my kitchen. Um, apparently there's going to be hail today at some point. Um, and checked uh, the temperature is about 10 degrees. That's uh, Celsius, so... Um, yeah, and there's no uh, no hot water. I mean, well, there's hot water, but obviously you can't drink that. Um, there's no drinkable hot water, I should say. So I'm going to make some. And I thought I'd use this as an opportunity to make an impromptu, random video review, kind of, of uh, this little camping stove thing. <laughs> Trangia? Trangia? I don't know. Made in Sweden. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. Um, some Swedish name, I suppose. Um, yeah, it's this little sort of camping cooker thing. You can power it with sort of alcohol-based fuel. So I've got some um, methylated spirits here. I'm going to use that. And um, I'm just going to make a cup of tea because that would be hopefully something useful to do. So <laughs> this uh, this video is completely different, I suppose. Oh yes, and I'm using a um, different cell phone to record my microphone because my my usual one is. Uh, out of power and I can't charge it, so uh, unless I use my laptop, I don't really want to use the battery on that at the moment in case I need it for something else. Um, so yeah, the audio quality, I apologise in advance if the audio quality is not up to the usual standard, it might be uh, might be a bit lower quality, more hiss possibly or something like that, but anyway, it should be serviceable, it should be still better than using the inbuilt microphone on the camera. So. Um, yeah, but anyway, if anyone's uh, interested in seeing what one of these is like and uh, how that works, well, now's your lucky day. Oh yes, here's my uh, meter here, so we've uh, nothing going on. Turn this on. We, uh, nothing. No power at all. Okay, so I'm doing this just under the window, and hopefully there's enough uh, light here that it's not too grainy. Um, if it is, I can hopefully fix it up a little bit um, in the editor, but still, um, here we go. So obviously, uh, I'm doing this by the window. I've got the window open actually as well, because you know these things give off, I think, carbon monoxide or whatever. Um, you don't want to get that in your room, uh, filling up your room, otherwise you'll suffocate, and it's a bad thing. So you've got to have a window open or do it outside anyway. So I'm going uh, to open this thing. So you've got a little uh, little sort of instruction, well, that's not an instruction thing, it's just a sort of a diagram showing you how it all fits together, how to pack it away, um, nothing else on the back. And then a little instruction manual, and then six different languages, one of them is English, as you can see there, instruction. So what's it say? Capacity five cubic 
cubic liters? No, that doesn't make sense. Um, five something of fuel will boil one liter of water in 10 to 15 minutes. Um, one filling of the burner, two thirds of the height, will burn for about 25 minutes. Um, Alright, so let's fill it like a third of the way or something to do a cup of tea. Shouldn't need need much for that. Anyway, so yeah, pretty uh, sparse stuff. Um, you've got the uh, thing itself, comes in this little thing, so this doubles as a, as a pot and a frying pan. Um, it just uh, clips on. So that's a uh, little thing. This is the uh, handle, so that's um, you can use that to grip the uh, the pan thing. Obviously, you take this bit of plastic out before you use it. Um, don't want to eat that. And the same goes for the pot. You got like a little handle for that, um, so it's all quite quite useful. And then the uh, thing itself, which uh, has this little thing there, the uh, pot sits in this. I don't know if that's, no, that just sits on top, but that's uh, sort of, um, I guess, a wind guard to stop the uh, stop the uh, flame getting blown out, and also this to uh, keep the pot centered on the uh, stand there, a the little stand and all that, so there we go. Um, this is the actual cooker itself, and um, it's got this lid. Um, I believe this is for extinguishing it. You just put this over the top once you're finished. Um, but it also has this little sort of swing out thing. I think it's maybe to adjust the uh, adjust the heat. I'm not entirely certain. Um, again, there's no instructions. They don't really tell you. Well, there are instructions, but they don't tell you how to actually use this. So I think it's some sort of adjustable thing. But yeah, anyway, there's uh, some more instructions on the top of the lid here. I don't know if the camera fix that up. Um, <laughs> interesting chainsaw noises in the background. Anyway, they uh, tell you that the... Um, oh, that was upside down. <laughs> okay. So I don't know if you can see that, but it says, Warning, use alcohol fuel only. Do not use petrol, petroleum-based fuels. Um, they're too dangerous. Um, so yeah, wait for the burner to cool down before you refill it. Just logical stuff like that. And it's got that both in English and French. And that's the uh, little thing. So the thing itself is, is quite simple. You just pour the fuel into there. Um, and then you light it and it's got these little holes on the top where it comes out. And uh, you get the flame, gas flame. So that's all pretty standard, I suppose. So if I put that here. And... Um, Maybe actually, I should put this underneath it, so I don't uh, burn my countertop. There we go. We got this there, and now can I put some of this in it. So I'm going to fill that about. Oh, I don't know. Maybe a third. Probably don't need a huge amount. All right. So I'll just grab my uh, water. Let's see. I don't know. Looks about right. And. Just light the thing. Now, being alcohol-based um, thing, methylated spirits is just denatured alcohol, so you can't drink it. Um, this may may not be obvious that there's a flame because it will be probably quite uh, quite pale. So, um, not entirely sure if you'll actually see that.
No, that hasn't done anything. Hmm. Let me try lighting it again. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to want to light. <laughs> well, that'll be funny. If only if it doesn't actually work. That's not very useful, is it? That's not very useful at all. Hmm. Maybe I didn't put enough in. Maybe it needs some more. is not off to a good start, is it? And now no one will ever want to buy any of these if you can't actually light them. I think maybe there's not enough vapour coming off this because it's just really cold. So it's just, there's nothing really for it to light. So maybe if I warm it up a bit. The pretty instructions don't say anything useful about this kind of thing. And um, it's a pretty interesting point really because I imagine if you were out camping somewhere and it was quite a cold cold day and cold place. I mean you might be out in the snow. I mean it's definitely snowing in Sweden isn't it? Um, and in places in New Zealand there's snow. I mean even here it's it's not that cold, but you'd expect that it would uh should work better than this. Well this is terrible. Um I'm gonna stop recording here and uh maybe start recording again if it actually starts working. And if not, then this video will never see the light of day. Okay, so just to come back to this, um I need to click Google and it turns out I think I was doing it wrong. Um the flames are supposed to come out through the little holes around the top there, but apparently the easiest way to light it is to uh, light the inside part first, and then after a while, as it heats up, the uh, fumes will start coming out the uh, holes, and then it should uh, switch over into a normal uh, functionality. I warmed it up in my hands a bit and blew on it, and it sort of warmed up a bit to the point where I could light the inner part, but now that I've put the camera back on, it seems to have cooled down and I can't light it again, so... Um, oh, there we go. Okay, so you should be able to see that. Ah, oh, there we go. And now it's switched over to the uh, different method. So now you put the uh, pot on. Okay, so that actually is... Uh, a lot easier when you do it the proper way. It seems to be going just fine. Of course that'll go faster if I put a lid on it. So let's just, just see how it goes. Um probably won't film this all, but I'll uh, come back once it's boiling. Alright, well that looks like it's just about ready. 
Um, definitely a lot of bubbles in there. Um, you can see it's sort of starting to move. Um, that wasn't very long, it was about five minutes or something. Um, certainly seems to be going quite well. It's probably hot enough now, but let's just see it actually boil, shall we? Nice and warm. Hmm. This is nice, isn't it? <laughs> ah. Got the handle here. Looks like it's pretty much done. Yep, that's definitely boiling. So, let's put that on. I'll uh, get my teacup here, my um, pineapple green tea. I'm sure some of you will be screaming about that right now. And, and there we go, just pour that in here. Delightful. So, this uh, this thing definitely works um, as long as you light it the correct way. Um, I did notice the flame was quite impressive um, and got only bigger as time went on. And I think you're supposed to use this thing um, to adjust the flame. You're supposed to put that over the top of this in some way and I guess close it slightly to adjust it, but unfortunately um, it doesn't fit in this thing, because if you want this uh, half open, for example, it um, doesn't sit on there straight, it's sort of, it, it just, yeah, it doesn't really work, it, it only fits on there when it's almost closed. Oh, okay, now hang on, if you put it like that, oh, that kind of works, maybe that's how you're supposed to do it. Hmm. Well, let's try that actually. Let's try it again. Let's try lighting it again and seeing how that works. Oh. Yeah, definitely worth noting it's uh gets very hot on the bottom there, so yeah, um, don't don't put it on something you don't want heat damage, I guess. Um That's not a very good match. Breaks in half. So then you're supposed to put that on there and it... I don't know, it only just kind of seems to cut off the holes and just burns from the inner part, which isn't very efficient, so... Works a lot better if you put the, uh, take the thing off. But yeah, um, that gets pretty hot <laughs> um, when it's being used for that, so... If that is what you're supposed to do, and you're supposed to have that half open and put it over the top there, it's... Um, when you want to go to close it, you're going to want to have gloves or something for that, because it's uh, pretty hot. Okay, well there we go. I've um, got my hot and steaming cup of tea, and uh, <laughs> it all seems to be working. Um, not a bad little cooker, I suppose. Uh, very lightweight, very compact. Um, seems to work pretty well. haven't uh, tried cooking any food on it, I guess, but um, it does work well for tea. So, yeah. Um, what else to say? 
Uh, yeah, if you're doing it indoors, make sure you've got all the windows open because it makes an awful smell and you don't want to suffocate yourself with carbon monoxide or whatever. I, ca I can't say though that I'm, a, I'm necessarily a huge fan of how the uh, thing actually works. I mean, the, um, the adjustment thing that, that you put over the top, this, uh, this sort of adjustment ring thing, I mean, I don't know what you call it, they call it the uh, simmer ring, I think. But this thing that's supposed to be adjustable and and all that, it's, uh, yeah, I don't know, I mean, it seems to, it works pretty well when it's going full bore, but then you do get quite a big flame, I don't know if, um, you know, you're supposed to do it like that, or if that's uh, potentially dangerous or not. Um, it does certainly get bigger as it warms up and, and burns, but, yeah, when you put this thing on, it cuts it back extremely, and then this thing gets really hot and you can't grab it afterwards, so, um, yeah, I don't know, I don't know if there's anything else, but, but hey, it worked for its intended purpose, which was to make a cup of tea and provide an amusing video of me trying not to set myself on fire, <laughs> so, um, yeah, anyway, I hope you enjoyed that, and, um, if you've got one of these uh, little cooker things, um, and I've done something completely stupid with it, uh, please let me know. Um, I would I'd be grateful to uh, find out if I've done something completely idiotic. Um, and if not, well, maybe this will inspire you to get one, or maybe not get one. I don't know. Hopefully you enjoyed that, or whatever, or something. Um, yeah, so, uh, not bad. See you next time.